Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm excited to bring you a review for the new Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation Tila 2.0. Unlike the previous Revelation Tila, which depicted the character after a time skip following the first episode, this shows Tila in her more traditional or classic outfit, which we did get a good look at during the first episode of the show, and even includes an alternate head to show the very end of that episode where she, you know, pulls her tiara off and lets her hair down and everything. This figure is coming as part of the fourth wave of Masterverse, but oddly enough, she seems to have been delayed in arriving compared to her wave mates because we started seeing sightings and, uh, you know, in-stock listings of your He-Man, your Skeletor, and your Merman way before Teela actually showed up. And because I pre-ordered the entire wave together, I didn't receive any of them until she finally came in stock. So now, since she is the one we've kind of all been waiting for, I'm going to kick off this wave by doing this review of Teela. That being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Tila's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll get a good look at the figure itself. We'll check out her posability, all the different accessories. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Tila comes in your standard Masterverse packaging. You get your Motu Revelation logo right here. You get her name down there. Now, there's no way to delineate her from the Wave 2 figure. It just says Tila here, just like you did on that one. Uh, we get a big window here. We can see the figure um, kind of sort of holding her sword. It's really just kind of levitating just out of her reach. You get a shield for the character. You get two closed fists, and you get her alternate head with her hair down. So very cool. On this side, you just get her name with her title, Heroic Warrior Goddess. So that hasn't changed. Then on this side, you get your first bit of artwork, uh, having her sport her, you know, headgear and her hair up, and she's charging into battle with her sword at the ready. Very nice piece of artwork. And then on the back you get her with her hair down. And honestly, I think it's a really cool piece of artwork. And even though I'm a sucker for the vintage look and you know enjoy getting Masterverse figures that look like updates to the old toys, I'm starting to like her having her hair down more. I think it just makes her look like more of a warrior type and less, uh, I don't know, staunchy royal court member. I don't know, I dig it. It's a good look. You can also see what look like Wind Raiders flying in the background, so that's cool. Then we get her name, her title again. Actually, they just wrote Warrior Goddess. They took the heroic off. I wonder if that was a uh, mistake or something. And we get this long bit of flavor text here. And that says, learning she had been lied to her entire life, Tila threw down her sword, rejected her title, and turned her back on her family, friends, and all of Eternia. Fate, however, has a way of returning. Prince out of secret identity as He-Man, the same secret that shattered her trust, became intertwined with her quest to save magic from disappearing from Eternia. And I think this really does kind of lay out my issue with Tila's arc in that show. This bit right here, right? Turns her back on her family, her friends, and all of Eternia. Now I get some betrayals can be very personal and really sting, but can you imagine being like, yo, forget the world. Like, <laughs> like one, a couple people lied to me and therefore just write it all off. That's it. I don't want to help anyone anymore. Complete character reversal. Now I'm a self-interested mercenary. Like, it was a really weird arc and one that I really didn't think was well done. And that's a shame because Tila was one of the best characters from the original Master of the Universe show. And she had some very interesting standalone arcs in that show. This one, I just, I got the feeling for the entire, you know, first two parts of season one of Revelation or, you know, I guess the whole season of Revelation because the next season is going to be called Revolution. I just got this feeling like they had an end game and then they just had to like take the different puzzle pieces and just cram them and like try to force them to fit into that end game. And they came up with some pretty contrived plot points. And I felt that Tila's character arc, at least certain aspects of it, was one of them. Like when you're told the entire universe is going to die and you're like, that's not my problem. Like it, it is. It literally is your problem because you're in the universe. So, I mean, unless she has become such a nihilist that she literally doesn't care if everybody dies which I doubt. It was just some weird writing and weird development. Okay, I'm gonna get off that. I know I bring this up a lot. <laughs> it bothers me, it really does, because I think that was one of the, the worst parts of that show right there, it was just them really doing some weird things with that character. Okay, so we got a good look at the box. Now we get to open it up and check out this classic looking figure inside. 
And now we get to see Tila out of the box. We have all our accessories laid out. We have her sword, two alternate hands, alternate head, and her shield. Now the shield, unfortunately, appears to just be a gold recolor of the one that came with Stinkor. I don't know why they did that, because Tila's original shield looks nothing like Stinkor, so I imagine it's just for budget reasons. It really is a shame, though, that we couldn't get her classic shield. And then the sword looks pretty good. Looks like her classic sword from the show. Uh, it's a little bit bent in the packaging, though not nearly as bad as some of the other soft plastic sword blades I've seen. Not all that noticeable, which is good. And then the two alternate hands. We have a closed fist for the right hand, and then we have another weapon holding hand for the left. So let's go ahead and take a look at Tila real quick. She's got all your usual posability, your double ball jointed head there, or sorry, just single ball joint. I think it's only single here. Uh, she has her universal shoulders, which work great. The bicep swivel, double bend elbows, which feel really good. Universal wrists. She has a ball jointed upper torso, which is admittedly a bit looser than I'd like. It's not too bad, it is nice and smooth, but it's probably not gonna support a lot of weight. She does actually have a waist swivel, even though you can't see it. She has universal hips, which splay out very, very far. Lots of posability there, lots of range of motion. She has a thigh swivel. Now you may notice that on this side, for some reason there's a pretty large gap in this little connection here. And I thought maybe when I saw in the package, like, oh, it just needs to be pushed in more, but like, no. That's as far as it goes. So for some reason, there's something keeping this from closing in like it should. The other one looks fine. So I don't know, it's bringing a new meaning to the word thigh gap. Womp, womp, womp. So she's got the double bend knees, which are nice, your boot swivel, and then your ankle rock and rotation. So pretty much everything you'd expect from a toy from this line. Uh, she poses well, she's got good tolerances, though again, like I said, that ball joint up here is a little bit loose for my liking. And she looks really good. She looks like a, you know, modern reimagining of your classic Tila design. Now, probably the biggest departure between Tila and Evelyn's uh, vintage designs and this new update is the fact that their little one-piece leotard-looking outfit has been changed into more like an armored skirt-like outfit. Uh, not too dissimilar from what you'd expect um, the modern Wonder Woman to wear, the one from the movies. Now, I imagine that this was done to uh, provide a bit of modesty to the female characters, but to be fair, the male characters all had their loincloths and stuff elongated too, so I guess at least it's equal opportunity censorship. I mean, personally, I kind of preferred the uh, almost borderline inappropriate outfits of the old He-Man toys. And so they just kind of set them apart, you know what I mean? They were just so unapologetically naked. <laughs> so <laughs> I would have preferred if they, you know, kept going with that, but it's a different time, different sensibilities, and, you know, this is the change they decided to make. I will say for what it is, it's a very, very nice looking outfit and does admittedly look a lot more practical than what Tila used to wear. This, the way it's designed, actually looks like it's made of armor, like kind of got this corseted thing going on, which is probably like a breastplate of some kind. And you know, it just works out pretty well. Oh, that's fun. She's got orange underwear. Huh. <laughs> Never noticed that. I was wondering like what color they had like done. Yeah, it's orange. Oh, that's random. She doesn't share that plastic color with anything else. All right, so yeah, I mean, I think it's a good looking outfit. It's again, just a modern or I guess new reinterpretation of it, but I think it sticks close enough to the landing to look enough like the original Tila. Now I really wanna check out her accessories. So her sword can be held in either weapon holding hand, though by default it's held in this one, which is fine. That works out pretty well. And the shield, it's built the same way as the other shields from this line, like He-Man's and Stink Wars and all that. But there's something a bit different here. All right, so you slide it over and then the smaller strap's supposed to slide over the hand, right? Cool, cool. There's a problem because this is the exact same piece. It is molded to fit the forearms of a much larger, very muscular male character. Tila's arms, by comparison, are much smaller. So there is not nearly enough friction here to hold this on. I don't know if like anybody realized that <laughs> when they gave her stink or shield or what, but you know, the normal configuration of having the open hand with the shield strap just kind of going over the fingers does not work for her. 
There is luckily a workaround, however. You can swap this hand out for the weapon holding one. And even though it's not a perfect fit, it will grab onto the shield strap well enough to work. So you slide the big one over first, and then you gotta work this strap between the thumb and the index finger, which is kind of hard to do, to be honest. Not the easiest thing in the world, and you may see me struggle here for a second. Get in there, go on, go on. Now you wanna hold it. Here we go, all right. So you can get it to work. And she's only, you know, kind of very loosely holding it, but it will stay. And that's the important part, right? So yeah, a bit of a workaround to get this thing to stay. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe they knew exactly what they were doing and they want you to use the weapon holding hand for this. And they just decided it was better that way than, you know, make a new part. Could be, or it could be an oversight, who knows. So there she is, you know, her classic sword and board. Now, of course the original toy didn't have a sword, it had a staff. But in the vast majority of fictional depictions of Tila, she's gone with the sword and board treatment. In fact, the Origins Tila that's being released along with Zor as part of that exclusive two-pack retains the sword from, you know, the filmation and onward. So I think she looks really good. Yeah, everything works out pretty well here. Now, of course, we could always swap out this classic head to give her a more dramatic looking one. Is that a double ball joint? No, it's definitely not, is it? It's just kind of in there. What a shame. All right, so push this down on. Slightly tighter fit than the other one for whatever reason. All right, and then we get this. And I think it looks really cool. What I really like about it is it's actually a different mold than the uh, regular head as far as the, the base part, the face. Um, she's got a very different expression, more furrowed brow and everything. And it's really doing a good job of conveying, I guess, the emotion of the moment where, you know, we see Tila let her hair down for, I think, the first time, maybe. And she's not happy <laughs> with everybody in that court. So it works really well. This is just a good alternate head to re-depict that scene from the very end of the first episode. And I think it looks really good. You know, the hair works out really well. It's well textured, well shaped, shaded, all that. The downside is that it prevents most of the articulation of the head. You can get about that much movement. And then the long hair in the back really stops her from getting much more. So it really is more for like just a very specific display than it is, you know, any sort of play or variety in how you're gonna pose her. All right, now for our last bit, only accessory I haven't really looked at yet, the closed fist. It's nothing special, just a closed fist. She could be, you know, punching something. She could be, you know, holding her fist up in anger, which would be very appropriate <laughs> for this moment here. She'd be telling her about, oh, I can't believe you lied to me, you know, forget all of you, this and that. So I like that you have options here. You know, the accessories are really cool. I do wish the shield was its own unique piece and had some different molding to it, but it still works. It's a nice golden shield. It matches her armor, matches the hilt of her sword and all that. And the fact that you can have her either with her classic, you know, little tiara, you know, piece of headgear with the hair up or have the hair down for something a little more modern or, you know, at the very least different. I'm more or less pleased with what came in the box. Okay, and here's our first comparison with the Origins or vintage style Tila. And you can definitely look at these two and tell like, yeah, that's the same character because the overall look is the same. They're both sporting the white and gold outfit. They have their, you know, tiara-like headpiece on there with the hair, you know, tied up in a tight bun behind it. You've got the brown boots, the bracers, the arm straps, all that. You know, it's obvious enough. And I think they did a good job of conveying, you know, hey, this is the same character while still, you know, putting just a little more detail into the outfit and everything and just kind of making it their own. The biggest difference I see is, again, the aforementioned, you know, skirt, Vice being more of a skin-tight outfit. Uh, they really accentuate the collar on the new one. It's much more prominent, and her, you know, little top area is much higher up on her collarbone. It's not nearly as low cut. The new braces are mostly white instead of the mostly, you know, brownish or bronze color of the old one. And the boots, you know, have a white fur lining instead of brown. But aside from that, her outfit is more or less the same thing. And then we get to the accessories. Now, I already mentioned how, you know, the new one comes with a sword, 
The old one came with a staff because she was meant to double as the attorney and goddess, right? In fact, she even came with that cobra hood thing, but I left that off just for, you know, better comparison. And then we get to the shield. Now, I don't mind the fact that they changed the shield from this burnt reddish color to gold. I think it looks better. But look how much more nice and intricate the old shield is. It has all this like filigree design, has a spike on the middle of it here. Hers is very, very plain by comparison, which is ironic because most of her, you know, redesign here was to make her outfit more intricate looking. And yet somehow when it comes to the shield, they just sort of like, meh, give her stink or shield, who cares? So like they really just dropped the ball in that one instance there. And I imagine it was just purely for budget. They didn't want to design a new shield for her, so they just recycled a part. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this as an update. And now here is our comparison with the Wave 2 Tila figure. And this shows just how very radically Tila tried to reinvent herself after the events of the first episode of Revelation. And, you know, if you saw my review for this particular figure, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the design. And I think my biggest issue with it was the fact that thematically it looks very, very out of place in a He-Man show, you know, in, in Eternia. It just doesn't really fit the aesthetic. It's far more, uh, I guess, down to earth and less fantastical. And something I always liked about Motu was the blend of like the high fantasy vibe with the uh, sci-fi stuff, right? It's a very, very unique aesthetic. And I always felt the redesign was, you know, some people that came into an old IP that have a very different idea of, you know, what they like to see in the design and what they think looks cool. And it really, really strays far from what we come to expect. So yeah, not super crazy about it. I will say I've kind of warmed up to it a little bit. And I did also establish during the review for this character that I don't dislike the figure itself. I actually think it's a really, really great figure. It's incredibly detailed, you know, it's well done, got uh, lots of accessories. But, you know, for me, this will always be what I think of when I think of Tila. This one's just a bit, it's, it's too off for me. Plus, I never really understood the trope of, like, when a woman wants to be rebellious, she does, like, the side shave thing. Like, I know this haircut exists, and I know there are plenty of women out there that have it, but how many of them really do? <laughs> like, how often does that actually happen where, you know, a girl or woman's like, I'll show them, and then she, like, does a side shave? Because it seems to be far more the idea of what people that, you know, live out in Hollywood land think of a rebellious woman vice what that actually looks like. I don't know, maybe it's just where I live. Maybe in other parts of the country, this is just a thing. But I don't see it very often. Now, because these two are so very differently dressed, they do not share a lot of tooling. In fact, I think the only tooling they may share is the upper shoulder area, because the forearms are different, the biceps are different, the legs are obviously very different because she's wearing pants, the boots, all that, torso, everything different. So, you know, upper shoulders, I think the hands are the same, at least the ones that, you know, are bold in the same pose. And I do believe the head sculpt, like specifically the base head sculpt, not including the hair, which is really just a separate piece glued on, I think it is the same head sculpt, though her eyebrows are painted at a different angle. The new Tila's eyebrows are a little more raised looking, but I think as far as this standard head, it is the same sculpt. For this one, I think it is a different sculpt, but it could also just be a trick of the paint too. I don't know. So the profile does look different. I think this is new, but I think these two are the same. So, while again, I'm not the biggest fan of Tila's redesign here, if you were a fan of the Revelation show and you want to get figures based on that, getting both of these is a really, really good way to get the two different, you know, contrasting times in Tila's life. One where she's the loyal captain of the guard, and then one where she's the rebellious mercenary. Now, of course, this does leave one final main design left, and that would be the Sorceress Tila. Now, will we get a figure of her? I don't know. Uh, what we've seen of upcoming Masterverse stuff seems to be straying pretty far from Revelation now. It seems like they're, you know, not really paying much attention to Revelation. A lot of it is She-Ra and New Eternia stuff. So they might be holding out until the sequel season, Revolution, comes out, because Tila should, in theory, still be the Sorceress during that, so they may be waiting for that to, you know, put out a Sorceress Tila figure, if they're going to do one. I wouldn't mind getting it. Uh, I mean, her design is similar to her mother's, 
but it's still unique enough to where I wouldn't mind having a Sorceress Tila. That way you can get, you know, kind of the full evolution of the character. But on that, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And this completes our look at the new classic outfit Tila from Masterverse. Overall, I'm very much pleased with this figure. It's got some oddities to it, like the weird gap in the leg there, which I hope isn't, you know, a common issue. I hope I just have a bit of a QC problem there. Um, and then the shield, while it looks nice for what it is, is very disappointing because it is just a reuse of Stinkors. Now, you know, Motu has never been a stranger to reusing parts, and Masterverse does the same thing, but they tend to do it where it makes sense, right? Where, like, the characters originally shared parts in the vintage line, so they're kind of recreating that. There's not a precedent for Tila wielding Stinkor Shield, so I think that's, you know, just a bit of a cop-out on their part. Uh, everything else about this figure I really like. I think it came out very well. Uh, it's a very accurate representation of how Tila looked in that first episode. Uh, the sword is great. The alternate head and, you know, standard head are both awesome looking. Which, um, in early showings of this figure, the heads looked really off. And I don't know if it's just like the renders or the lighting. But they seem to have improved them since, like, these were first revealed. And I do appreciate that because I think they both look a lot better. So yeah, I really like this toy. I think if you're more of a, you know, a classic Motu purist, you'll probably vastly prefer this one to the Wave 2 uh, Tila, the Mercenary one, because this one really just kind of scratches that nostalgia itch a lot more. I think they both have their place in a collection, just depending on, you know, whatever the scope of that collection is, and I don't mind having both of those figures. You know, when the first Tila was released, I was very disappointed because, like, well, I want a, you know, I want a classic Tila. Well, they did that. So now I'm happy, right? You can have both, you can have just one of them, neither. You get options. Still kind of crossing my fingers for a Sorceress Tila here one of these days. That way I can have the trifecta of her different outfits throughout uh, Revelation. But, you know, having this in hand now, I'm very happy with it. I think, you know, it came out just about as well as it could, shield, you know, design notwithstanding. And I think that if you are in the market for a Tila, which is, you know, a little more familiar, this will really scratch that itch for you. Of course, that is just how I feel about this figure. So now I want to know what you all think of it. Do you like this toy? Do you think it's a good, you know, modernized update on Tila's old design? Uh, do you like the way everything came out as far as the outfit and the accessories and everything? Or do you not want this? Maybe they changed too much. Maybe you just don't need, you know, a Masterverse scale Tila. Or maybe you're happy with the Wave 2 one. Any and all feedback is always welcome in that comment section. If you enjoyed this review make sure to toss it a like let youtube know you want to see more stuff like this if you do want to see more like this make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when i post something new i thank you for joining me for this look at the new masters of the universe masterverse revelation classic outfit tila with all that said i will see you next time